Yes. Well, hi there. At least I could come in. You certainly may. It's good to see you. Me too. I brought you these. They look absolutely beautiful. Thank you. It's okay. Well, that looks perfect. Well, I really appreciate you coming by. I know hospitals couldn't possibly be your favorite place to visit. They're nobody's. Mm. So, is there anything I can do to help? That's very sweet of you to ask. Unless you've got a heal fast potion in your pocket, I think I'm just beyond help. How about you? Is there anything I can do for you? You know, you can you can unload on me. Why don't you give it a shot? Hi. Cora's in the middle of an oatmeal bath with little Tyler for his chicken pox, because this better be important. Yes, and I've got a very cranky baby. If Justice here, he's on his way. With some major news. Here we go. Hey, thanks, everybody. I want to thank you for your time this afternoon. I have dug up some very, very juicy information. You mm. found out who's behind Daco? And boy, are you going to love this. Uh, would you mind uh, bringing me a nice, tall sea breeze? Excuse me. Uh, could I get a refill, too, please? Uh, Felicia, I... I hate to bother you yet again, but Mac had a rendezvous with a mysterious woman today, and do you know when he's going to be back? If he hasn't told you, why would he tell me? You know, we really could be friends if she didn't have such a possessive attitude. Forget about Mac. We have bigger fish to fry. It must be extraordinary working with Mrs. Pawa. Yes, it is. Oh, to walk in her shoes, if only for a moment. A moment in her shoes would be quite enough. Considering how large her shoes would be to fill. Indeed. <laughs> but how inspirational. Oh, yes. So inspirational. Oh, yeah. Nice to see you. No one has ever examined Sibylla, the great mother of the gods, with a quite the same universal perspective. It is truly compelling how Mrs. Powell relates this ancient goddess to women in the modern world. Well, perhaps women haven't changed over the years as much as you might think. Although one might think that seating would have improved since the Stone Age. Was your chair is as uncomfortable as mine? I didn't think about it. What about this day of blood Mrs. Powell referred to? Is that still practiced today? Would you excuse me? Just, well, I think uh, that's a question that should be posed directly to Mrs. Powell. Um, I'll go and get her. Excuse me. Oh, excuse me, ladies. Excuse me. Excuse me, Mrs. Powell. I'm, I'm so sorry to interrupt. But, um, Mrs. Peters, over there, over there, would, has the most profound question to ask. And, um, well, we want to address it directly. Indeed I do. Excuse me, ladies. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Thank 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 Well, maybe I will, but you could teach it's me later. It's the day of gloves. The ritualistic day of abstinence from food and pleasures of all kinds, especially the cardinals, to commemorate the sorrow 
of the mother for Atis. Dances would begin, lasting long into the night, reaching peaks of frenzy, involving self-flagellation of the priests and self-mutilation by the neophytes. During the Terribolian ceremony, the mystics would cleanse themselves in the blood of a bull. Oh. Do, do you think the practice is still continued today? I have no proof, but one never knows. That's <laughs> oh. I'm sorry, but fatigue has finally taken its toll. I am in dire need of a cup of tea. Oh, 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 yes, yes, no, you're right, Miss Moore. You're right, Miss Moore. Thank you so much. Not like one. Thank you so much. Yes, thank you. Hey, don't get too into this, all right? I mean, we got one very curious Lucy Co on our hands. So far, so good. Yeah. Why push it? Well, come on, you did your thing. Now let's get out while the getting's good. But we haven't found anything yet. Let's so walk out that door. Madame Maya can start her, her pitch. You know, everyone, get out your checkbooks. Okay, okay, but you know what? Between the chairs and my heels, my back is killing me. Your chair was uncomfortable? Oh, I never had a harder one. <sighs> that clinches that something very interesting is going on. Interesting as in dangerous? What we're witnessing are some classic brainwashing techniques. Madame Mayan is appealing to the emotional side of these women, making them feel like they're part of some special system. And once their judgment is ever so slightly impaired, she'll make some very subtle suggestions. Have you got evidence? Check out the high sugar diet. Now you combine that with the physical discomfort of sitting in one of those straight back chairs. By the way, the physical aspect is compromised. Now you put that together with the revelation of some awesome mystery which my mother of the gods speech played right into. And that music. Those Eastern chants have been known to directly affect the alpha waves of the brain. I read that. I read that. This is 25% of the population is rendered more susceptible when the alpha state is induced. That's correct. Which means this is a very suggestive environment, and that means that we can't go anywhere yet. You're right. We're going nowhere. Mom, I'll get right back to you. Miss Pella? Miss Pella? Uh, I hope your throat is feeling better. Could I just say to you that I feel like meeting you has, has been the single most thrilling event of my life? Thank you. Difficult as this would be for you to believe, I was once your age. I haven't forgotten it. It's just school stuff. My kids, workload, teacher? No, the kids are great. Lucky's there and so sly. They're cool. But, you know, they're kind of guy stuff. I'm sure there are girls there. Yeah, there's Sly's friend, Julia Netzker. She's nice. Oh, yes, her parents just joined the club. She's new, too. She's very popular. She got a head start this summer meeting new people. Well, then maybe she can introduce you to the people that she's met. She kind of tried. Not very good at remembering names. Well, you shouldn't be expected to. Not on the first day, for heaven's sakes. Everybody knew everybody, and that's it. I didn't. Well, I'm sure you can handle the work. I thought I could. I used to be the smartest one in my class. But you know what? Now this kid's like two years younger than me, doing the same thing. Talk about feeling stupid. Well, I'm sure that's the target school's tracking system. Your old school had subjects organized in a different way. I don't know. Give yourself time. You'll catch up. I have an idea. Why don't we give a little party at the house? You can invite anybody you want to, a kind of get acquainted party. And I can talk to your teacher. We can set up a program that would get you caught up on your schoolwork in no time at all. A study group. What a perfect idea. This way you can get caught up on your... On your... Stop! Please. What's the deal, Justice? Oh, wait. Where's Leslie Lou? Ah, applying for a management position. <laughs> Underneath A.J.'s desk. <laughs> Just have it. 
<laughs> I'm going to keep an eye on her. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, Justice, you got us all accounted for. Let's have it. Mm -hmm. Well, once you get it, you're not going to want it. The company behind Dayco is Dayworks. The person behind Dayworks is none other than Damien Smith. No. Oh, please, God, no. Not Damien Smith. Not him. A very poorly concealed paper trail leads right from Dayco to Damien Smith. Don't you have quite a history with Damien's father? <sighs> he dogged us for 13 years. And just when we finally get rid of his father, now his son wants to continue the battle. And it's as much as he would like us all to believe that he doesn't approve of his father's tactics, I am sure that he is just as ruthless. Well, the point of this meeting is to make sure that we can stop Damien before he really gets started. I almost wish that it were the Quartermains. But Monica assured me that they knew absolutely nothing about this. The Quartermains are behind the Foundation 100%. Yeah, Grandfather would never go back at his word this time. He is committed. No, but Damien would in a New York minute. Guys, after us again, I can't believe this. And this time he's making it personal. Well, whatever the reason, we've got to organize a counterattack. Mm -hmm. Well, let's see what we got. We got the, uh, the management seminar, we've got the Merchants Association, then we've got the plan for the customer incentive program. I mean, these are all good things, but frankly, folks, none of this is going to stop Damien. I mean, I'll be damned if I'm going to let this guy ruin all the good work that we've done. AJ, a lot of the companies we're backing are service-oriented. You get the plumbing, the employment agency, the barbershop. Dayco will not hit them that hard. I know that, Jason, but it is going to hit the hardware store and the children's apparel store and all the small existing businesses. You're right. They can all be undercut by a big chain. I mean, this is before they even get a chance to get up and running. Damn this guy. Justice, have you thought about the political ramifications? I have every intention of visiting you in the governor's <coughs> mansion, if not the White House. And since your career is so tied up with the foundation, I'm not about to let it go down. Well, your altruism is touching the Keisha. Yes, I'm aware of the politics. But think about Royal Street, that beautiful, tree-lined, quiet street where Lucky plays with Foster because it's so safe. Mm, that's where Bradley and then Idis and David played stickball and rode their bikes when they were children. That's right. The woods at the end of Royal Street have always been a safe haven. I mean, there are still deer there. Can you imagine all the fumes and the noise and the traffic of a huge store were put there, that beautiful riverbank is going to be turned into a concrete parking lot, homes just pushed aside, the ones that we fought to preserve, and all by Damien Smith. No, it is not going to happen. Laura, we're going to stop it. Okay, tell us how. Well, for starters, I have a meeting with Mr. Smith in 20 minutes. I want to be there. I was counting on that. No, what do we do? No, AJ, you hold down the fort here. If we can't stop him cold, we're going to need all the strategy you guys can come up with. I'll let you know what happens. Thank you again. Godspeed, Jeff. Uh oh. Watch this. Watch this. Four, three, two, one. My baby! Oh. Well, she says she prefers to stay here with us. She doesn't want to go see that nasty Damien Smith. We're gonna be fine, Laura. Really, go. Thank you. You're welcome, my sweetie. Go. <laughs> Mama's in quite a state, isn't she? And don't we love her for it? Huh? Don't we? Miss Power, I found your talk utterly inspiring. You're very kind. Oh, I, I hope it doesn't seem too forward of me, or, or I hope I don't intrude too much, but I just wanted to ask if perhaps after the seminar we could meet together privately, because your presentation has just made me want to study everything you talked about in more depth. You have a whole lifetime, my dear. The group is quite enthralled, Mrs. Power. This 
is the perfect tone to kick off the seminar. Oh, thank you. Now I really must say good night. Oh, but, it, but it's only afternoon. Yes, but in London it's late evening, and there are phone calls. I simply must return, you understand. Of course. Yes, well, good night, everyone. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Good night. Good night. Afternoon. Oh. Yes, they left. Madame Maya. I think that is the most fascinating woman. Miss Power is very, very attractive. Mrs. Power? Yes, quite. Well, I find this rather embarrassing to say. Well, of course, she probably has already intuited my feelings, so what the heck. I find her very attractive. I mean, I find her attractive. I don't think I've ever had feelings like that about another woman. I know I haven't. But these feelings are... Wow. I must admit, I did have a tiny premonition from the moment I met Norma that you might feel this way. Sorry. Don't worry about it. No. That was awful. I never do that. You're 11. You get to. Norma, oh, kill me. Monica, listen. I really appreciate everything you're trying to do for me. But I just think a party would make things worse. I was only suggesting that, that reaching out to people is not usually a mistake. I know, but I think I should do it on my own time. Well, I didn't mean to push. I know you didn't mean to, but Monica, sometimes you do. I'm aware of that. Well, hey, it's no big deal. I shouldn't even have mentioned it. I'm here to see how you are, you know, not to complain about me. Well, you can complain to me anytime you want to. That's what I'm here for. So you just fire at will. Okay. I appreciate that, really. And if there's any way you can help me with school, let you know. Okay. Try that on the street. You look better. It's an act. How you doing? Well, I'm uh, hanging in, hanging on. Well, you know what Ben Franklin said: we must all hang together, or most assuredly, we will hang separately. <laughs> He's got a point. You know what I'd like to do? I'd love to hang out with you alone. Not a good idea, but I'd like that too. We can never do what we'd like, huh? What else is new? Someone is carrying the weight of the world. Excuse me. Hey, kiddo. Where are you going with the long face? No, not so fast. Let me guess. You paid Monica a visit. How'd you know? Because that would be a nice thing to do, and you're a person who does nice things. Yeah, well, I, I wasn't very nice today. What happened? Maybe yeah, we shouldn't discuss it. My mom always says it's not polite to talk about people behind their backs. Leslie loses sleep. I made a crib for her out of Justice's big desk chair. But she stood up against the wall so she can't fall out. So don't go in there and sit down. Go in there? I, I can't even stand still. I'm sorry. This is driving me crazier by the minute. I know I should have gone with Justice to go see Damien. AJ, Justice will give us a report. Yeah. Meanwhile, we need to get back to work. At least now we know who we're dealing with. You realize that he's been looking for a way to get back at us. I mean, I don't know about you, but I will be damned if I'm going to let this guy ruin what I've poured my life's blood into. What we've all worked for. Well, it's going to take all of us to beat him. And we can do it. Just don't lose heart. 
Damien knew exactly the damage that Daco would do to the Foundation. This guy went right for the jugular. So now we're gonna go for his. Mm. Ah, nicely primed. For what? For our meeting. And what meeting is that? Oh, well, in about two minutes, I am expecting Justice Ward to walk through that door. And then am I supposed to get lost? Just the opposite. As a matter of fact, I think the Justice has done the minimal homework necessary to discover that I'm behind Daco, which means he'll arrive with his guns blazing. Mm -hmm. He'll give you the opportunity to try out some of the PR strategies we've been discussing. A positive spin on Daco? Mm -hmm. I'm ready. And he's brought Laura Spencer. Two beautiful women. That should keep the proceedings civilized. You're right, I gotta get some flats. Mm. If this drag act is going to continue, I definitely advise it. I had to go. Oh, it worked like a charm. Thanks for your help. Oh, you're welcome. I mean, Kevin's Mrs. Power Act. It's truly amazing. All this highbrow stuff about the ancient mother of the gods. Maybe I should sign up. It's not all fun and games, Felicia. <laughs> Maya is definitely up to something. Look, we both think it's uh, sophisticated, subtle brainwashing. But we need more information, so we're going back in. Did Lucy buy the act? So far, so good. Well, hello. What's this? Maybe trouble. Every economic renewal area needs an anchor. Daco will anchor Charles Street. Not only in a wide variety of retail goods at lower prices, but it will also create jobs. First in construction, and later in sales and maintenance. Even in management positions, there'll be workers' benefits, job security, a sense of stability. And you, as a community leader, must endorse this investment in the future. Well, I suppose that depends on the future we're investing in. See, I prefer one where capital is provided by local resources who care about the folks they're investing in, where management positions are filled by people who know the product and the customers. Small town, good old-fashioned America. Let me paint a quick scenario for you. You bring Daco in here, low prices, everyone flocks to your stores. In a very short while, the local merchants are out of business. Daco achieves its monopoly on the market. You raise prices, slowly but steadily. There's no competition. Retail consumers just playing out of luck, and in the process, Charles Street gets raped. The predatory creature you make me out to be. Do you realize how much sweat equity has gone into making the Charles Street community a decent neighborhood? A place where children can grow up with a sense of community and a strong economic base so their parents can have jobs. Catherine, just address the issue of jobs. A strong economic base does not mean one primary employer who controls all the prices in the neighborhood. All I'm suggesting is that you catch up with the rest of the world. Come on, folks, this is the 20th century. Where anything goes, including sabotaging the Charles Street Foundation. Why must everything be so adversarial with you? Now, the cornerstone of good old America is good old-fashioned competition. Yes, I agree. Except this is not healthy competition because it isn't fair. Our businesses can't compete with Daco. They won't have enough time to get up and running before they're just destroyed by Daco. So the world ain't fair. I'm doing nothing more than entering into the free marketplace. But you've already judged my motives. Is that fair? And your companies are going to be handpicked and heavily subsidized by you. Is that plain fair? And if I bring in Daco for solid business reasons and you oppose them out of political motivation, is that fair? I don't really think that it betrays, Monica, for you to share your troubles with me. I mean, after all, it's a family situation. I know. I just tried to tell her about some school stuff. What kind of stuff? Well, I, I don't know too many of the kids there, and I kind of feel like an outsider. Sure. It's very tough to go into a new group. I told her because she asked. But she didn't just listen like you do. Like Mom did. She tried to... Jump in and fix everything. So, um, you kind of feel crowded, huh? 
Yes, that's exactly how I feel. It, it makes me not want to tell her things because she's going to feel like she has to do something about it. You know, I'm sure that Monica doesn't intend to crowd you or to manage your life. I know. I just wish she wouldn't try so hard to make everything better. Because she can't. No. Nobody can. You're going to find your own way in time. And far be it from me to think that I can manage Monica, but maybe I could kind of run a little bit of interference for you and maybe make a few subtle suggestions that will ease the pressure. That'd be great. But I still feel kind of guilty about talking behind her back. I'm just kind of think of it as me lending a helping hand. Have a seat. I'm almost done. What? You know, you and Lucy really ought to refrain from these between appointment assignations because some of your patients might begin to wonder. Oh, that Lucy. <laughs> yeah. Actually, you look a little ragged around the edges. Are you sure you're up for me? Absolutely. Thank you. I ran into Alan a little while ago, and he allowed as to how he wouldn't mind spending a little time alone with me. How do you feel about that? I allowed as to how that sounded like a pretty good idea to me, too. Mm. Do you think it is a good idea? Is that going to give you what you want? Ah, oh, yes. And what do I really want? Well, that's what we'd better figure out. What I want most is to be appreciated. And Alan appreciates me for who I am. And who is that? Not a perfect person. Never was, never will be. No one is. Tell that to Tony. Do you really think he expects you to be perfect? All I know is I always feel the pressure. I mean, Alan accepts me for who I am, warts and all. And that kind of acceptance is the most wonderful feeling I know. I, mean, I know that I can be unforgiving. You take Laura Spencer, spoiled little princess. And I know that I can be impatient, tune into me trying to be a friend to Monica. And I know I can be catty and critical and insensitive. But you know something? Alan sees it all, and he hears it all. And yet he opens his arms to me for a hug. No strings. God, that's such a turn-on. What else do you crave besides appreciation? I guess to balance things, you know, between, between my need for security and the kind of anchoring that Tony offers my children give me. child gives me. And a sense of excitement and adventure and spontaneity. And before you say Damien Smith, I don't mean danger. I mean passion. But you don't feel that with Tony. I love Tony. And I guess I'll always love Tony. But if I'm really honest, and I really take a look at what's keeping us apart. It's me. Not being able to muster up feelings that aren't there. Alan is a distraction from the anxiety and the pain of that process. Oh boy, is he ever. Am I disturbing you? Depends what you want. Oh, wait, wait, wait. I don't roll over soon. I'm gonna scream. Oh. oh it's not really that. It's... It's me. Emily was here to visit. I saw her on her way out. 
It was so sweet of her to come. She brought me flowers. We talked. And I felt that she was really reaching out. Maybe even trusting me. And I tried to help her, and it all just backfired. It was just so frustrating. You know, it must be very difficult for her to deal with you in a hospital setting. Believe it or not, Alan, I figured that out myself. It seems that ever since Emily's been with us, it's just been one crisis after another. You just need to give her a little bit of time to relax, Monica, to figure out what normal is. She'll do it. And try not to take it personally. Well, I do take it personally. She doesn't behave that way with you or Ned or anybody else in the family. Just me. Pretend her to the throne of mother. Is that how you see yourself? Well, not by choice. You shouldn't put so much pressure on yourself, Monica. You don't need to work that hard. She knows that you love her. It's just that when you keep trying to fix things for her, she just, she feels like you, you're trying to control her. You have mentioned that before. Well, I'm not making it up, Monica. She's actually told me. Oh, oh, that's great. I really love having my inadequacies being the topic of conversation between you and Emily. Don't get defensive, Monica. No one's to blame. She's as frustrated as you are, and she wants to make it work. But she feels pressure to give you the appropriate reaction, and she feels like a failure when she gets it wrong. This isn't about right or wrong. I am there to support her. Isn't that what my job is supposed to be? But to her, it doesn't feel like support, Monica. To her, it feels like... Like controlling, I know. And I know you're only doing it because you're scared. Is this the nickel analysis for the day? I'm not going to get into this. Well, look, I'm sorry if I am starting another fight, Alan. It's just another one of my faults. Monica, I love you, but I'm not going to stand here and take this. I'll see you later. You tossed around the word fair as if it had no connection to uh, decency or compassion or, heaven forbid, doing the right thing. That's a very slippery concept, the right thing. Deco running roughshod over Charles Street is not the right thing, and you know it, and we know it. So the question is how to get you to rethink it. You rethink it, Justice. Tying yourself to a foundation is a transparent political move. That's okay. But you have absolutely no business taking the high moral ground here. Your interests serve you. Our interests serve us. But we happen to think what's best for the community is progressive thinking. But progress means change. And you seem opposed to progress and change. You know, she's right. That can be politically very unhealthy. This shouldn't be about politics or money or even progress if it means that it's going to trash people's lives. With all due respect. Your personal concerns are not necessarily what's best for the community as a whole. I am part of the community. It's our neighborhood and you can't have it. Okay? So, you make your money somewhere else. In Charles Street, we're going to fight you every step of the way, and we are going to win. I think she said it all. <laughs> Loved it. Love us. <laughs> <laughs> we really are incredible, aren't we? Mm. We undermine the foundation. We embarrass the quarter mains. We possibly cause Justice Ward his city council seat. Mm. And we make a ton of money to boot. Mm -hmm. Oh, you are delicious with your cloths. So. <laughs> <laughs> Come on. Let's uh, tune up for round two. <laughs> so, pity the poor man whose life is... Uh, Filled with nothing more than counting cases of scotch. Better than counting bodies. Darling, could you wait for me outside, please? Uh, don't take too long. Alan, just seems in the simplest, strongest way to make me feel good. It's very hard to resist. He also represents a new relationship with no baggage, and that's very appealing. But some of the baggage from your marriage is also positive. There's the experience that you and Tony share, and he's still that anchor that you want. Yes, but sometimes I feel like that anchor is weighing me down. I feel like it's 
pulling me under. Tony's gone through a lot of changes this year. He's become aware of your needs in a way that he can understand them and accept them. And it, it seems like he's really getting past the pain of discovery. Have you put in any thought into the pain that could result from having an affair at this point? Oh, of course. I mean, I don't think about much else for all of us. Tony, and for Alan's marriage, it would be horrible. I agree. So when you're having trouble trying to reconcile your two selves, maybe you should just stop and think about some of the changes that Tony's gone through. Bobby, it takes time to rebuild the trust that can allow for freedom and passion. But that time is a worthwhile investment. So what you're really saying is, don't blow it now. Well, I'm not ready to throw in the towel with Tony. I mean, after all, that's why I'm here, isn't it? Well, if you open a Christmas present before Christmas, it's not nearly as exciting. Why don't you just hang in with Tony for a little while longer? He might surprise you. Whoa, wait, wait, where, where, where do you think you're going, Mom? <laughs> Nowhere, fast. I am so bored with staring at that ceiling. You want me to put a mobile up there for you? Cute. What are you doing back here? Are things that slow at work? No, not exactly. I was worried about you. Just wanted to come say hi. Well, I'm fine. Listen, tell me about day works. Laura Spencer was here and wanted to know if we were behind it. It's Damien Smith. You're kidding. No, no, I wish I was. I, the guy has got it in for me. Or us. I, Damien bought this property secretly. Justice found out about it. And now he started this huge discount operation that threatens to destroy every single small business that the foundation has set up before they even get up and running. Now, I'm not going to let that happen. Well, if, if there is anything that I can do financially or politically, socially, you just let me know. Well, there is one thing you could do for me. Hmm. You could tell me that everything between you and Dad is okay? I would like to, but I... I can't do that. Not now. With you. You can't have it both ways. You seem perfectly happy with Damien. Happy? I'm not so sure. But I think I'm where I belong. My career's got a new start. You're doing fine. Except... You miss me? Zephyr. Ouch. You are bad. No bloodshed? Unless you mean from a broken heart. Oh, please. Okay, it's none of my business. So, tell me about Kevin and Lucy. You think Lucy's really gonna buy this act? Mm. Mm. You smell funny. Now, that's an interesting opener. I'll counter with... not badly, I hope. Doc, have you... have you been using cold cream again? You know, you've been sniffing too much coffee. Tell me about your day. Oh. I thought you would never, ever ask. I have had the most terrific day, but I'm afraid if I tell you about it, then maybe you won't want to hear about all the wonderful feelings and things that I've been doing today. I want to hear. Okay, okay, then good. It started off with the most tantalizing proposal I've had in a long time. It's, it's about opening a new line of cosmetics for deception. But it involves Damien Smith, and so I didn't really think that you perhaps would want me to go on and hear, tell you about it, you know. You're right. Okay, well then, we move on to my seminar. Oh, Doc, it was wonderful. Norma St. John Powell was the keynote speaker. She is so incredible. You would love her. She gave this fabulous speech on Sibylla, the mother goddess, and it was enthralling. She is deep and intense and powerful. And I have to tell you, I found her very attractive. I found her very attractive to me. <laughs> 
And I know that if you just got to know her, you know, and heard her speak, that you would probably love her, too. At least on some level. Now, Lucy, what she got that I ain't got? This is Joan London. And Charles Gibson. You may be stressed out and not even know it. Tomorrow, how to spot and deal with stress in your life. Plus, Andy McDowell and Brett Butler on tomorrow's Good Morning America. Here on ABC.